Hello, I'm Dr. Manor Haas. I'm an endodontist from Toronto, Canada, and I just want to borrow a few minutes of your time to talk about what I consider as being the most revolutionary thing when it comes to endodontic diagnosis and treatment planning. I talk about this in the July uh, edition of Dentistry Today, and I'd like to sort of elaborate on it a little bit more uh, right now. So the best way I can describe what I think is the most revolutionary thing is by showing you this wonderful bag of apples over here. Now imagine you know that there's something is wrong in this bag of apples. Something's not right, but you look at it and you can't really tell. And so imagine this thing now as being our face. And this over here is being the cheekbone. You look at this two-dimensional film, you look at it only from one direction, and maybe you see something is wrong or right here or there, but you can't quite tell. And you sort of wish that you could cheat and kind of look from behind and look from underneath and spin this thing around but you can't. 2D imaging only lets us take films from one direction. It only lets us evaluate things from one direction. And that's the problem. So in this bag of apples where something is not right, the patient is symptomatic, they're complaining of something, you kind of wish you could do this. Spin it around, look at it from below, and you kind of wish that you can reach in there, and oh, lo and behold, you find this rotten fruit over here. Well, that's what 3D imaging lets you do. It lets you take hundreds of slices out of this. You can go in there and pick one of those slices out and tell exactly what's going on in there. It lets you look at things all the way around. That's 3D imaging versus two-dimensional imaging, which has been available to us for decades, where we look at things only from one direction. So let me show you an example over here. This patient, imagine, presents to you. And they're complaining of nothing, really. They're asymptomatic, but you take a film and you see that there's some resorption going on in this lower incisor. You look in their mouth and the soft tissues seem fine, the teeth seem fine, labially, lingually. You say, yeah, but I still see there's something that's, that's not quite right. They'll say, well, yeah, I know what, I'm gonna take a Panorex. All right, you're gonna take a Panorex. This is still two-dimensional imaging. You're still looking at only from the labial or buccal. And you kind of look at this pattern and say, well, maybe there's something here or maybe there's something there, but this is 2016. You don't want to say maybe or I think or probably or my gut feeling says this. This is 2016. I want to know exactly what's going on definitively and immediately and without having to cut open the patient or drill into a tooth, I want to know what's going on. That's where 3D imaging comes into play. And you say, well, I wish I could do this. And you can where you look at the same area, you look at it from the front, from the side, from the top, from three different views at any given moment, and all of a sudden now you can tell what's going on. You look at this over here, and all of a sudden you can see there's a large apical lesion. There's resorption. You can tell exactly where the resorption is. It's on the lingual. It's subosseous. You can tell the size. You can take a cross-section of these teeth, and in this cross-section, the axial view or occlusal view, you can tell exactly where the resorption is, what proportion of the root is involved, and even better than that, you can go in there and you can even take this volume rendering. So either you look at it like this, where you've got the gums covering the area, the bone and whatnot, and think things seem to kind of be normal, or you take this 3D scan and all of a sudden your eyes can open up. And you see that there's a huge periapical defect. It's not only one tooth that involves, it involves three teeth. All of a sudden you see that on the lingual. There's bone loss also, and you see exactly where the resorption is. And ask yourself, how would you have diagnosed and treatment plan this case based on what we've had available for decades and decades versus how would you diagnose and treatment plan things here? This is what I talk about in my article, how this is now revolutionizing and changing how we diagnose and treatment plan so many endodontic cases. Let me show you another case. Max 3 canine premolar with a fistula between those roots recurring, no one can figure out what's going on, both didn't respond to pulpal tests. What do you do? How do you diagnose a treatment plan? On a two-dimensional film, seems fine. You stick a gutta percha in there and okay, it traces to between the roots. You still don't know which one to treat. Again, this is 2016. I don't wanna to have to drill into any tooth or cut anything open unless I know exactly what's going on. I don't wanna have any doubt in this case. So we take a 3D scan and all of a sudden, in this 3D scan, we see exactly where the etiology is from. We can tell it's exactly coming from the canine. It's a large lesion that on a PA, you seem pretty harmless. And not only that, the wealth of information we have from this 3D scan of the canine is showing us that there's unusual anatomy. It's not a straight root anymore like in a two-dimensional film. It's got a pigtail anatomy. 
it's got apical resorption, which means no apical stop, which means you now have to be careful not to uh, obturate in a way where stuff goes out the apex. You need to be very careful now when it comes to instrumenting. Because of the information we have from the 3D scan, we know we need to be very careful instrumenting this very curved route, unlike what it looked like in two dimensions. So again, ask yourself, how would you diagnose and treatment plan in a two-dimensional film versus a three-dimensional situation? That's what I can't stress enough this day and age. Now, do you use this case on everything? No, but I've shown you just a couple of cases, and these are interiors. Imagine what it's like when I show you posteriors, if I had time for that. So do you use it on every case? No. Um, if it looks like a duck, if it walks like a duck, if it sounds like a duck, it's a duck. You may not need a 3D scan. But in a case where you know there's something wrong, the patient is complaining of something, the two-dimensional film seems okay, and you don't have enough information, that's where 3D imaging is absolutely invaluable. It is priceless in these cases. And in fact, a 3D scan can very often save the patient from the time, the money, the pain of procedures that otherwise wouldn't have been helpful. And cases that I've found have been particularly beneficial uh, for 3D imaging are cases where you might need to do endodontic retreatment or endodontic surgery, root resorptive cases, um, or just simply a case where things look normal in a two-dimensional film but the patient is still complaining of something. That's where I really, really am a big fan of taking a 3D scan. So going back to Menorah's lovely bag of apples, I hope now you understand why 2D imaging, where we're looking at it from only one direction, only gives us so much information versus a three-dimensional scan that helps us look all the way around and is so beneficial and is so revolutionary in how we diagnose and treatment plan many endodontic cases. So I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, you're always welcome to reach out to me um, and certainly visit us online at dentistrytoday.com uh, or certainly in print. So again, thank you very much for your time. I do hope you learned something and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye now.